this is pretty cool. <laughs> now I'm assuming this is a very rare species, right? I suppose you I didn't say rare. I just said that <laughs> I don't get them in the hand up here very often. <laughs> It's not already taken. Isn't it? Is no. Are you serious? Yeah. One of us will Okay. All right. So, all right. Can everybody hear me okay? I think that's we, we transport our birds in these cans. And there's a few reasons for that. One reason is because it's dark in there. And to them, darkness means, you know, silence, quiet. It calms them down. Another thing is, is that it's a really great way for us to keep them safe. They can't flop around in there. They can't injure any feathers. So if we had put them all in cages, wire cages are horrible for birds. They can flap against the bars and, and they can wreck their feathers. So this is a really great, safe way for us to transport our birds. Now this particular bird was what we call an incidental catch. <laughs> An incidental, it's a feisty one. Incidental catch at one of our banding stations. What is it? Yeah, this is a crow. Very good. We don't, they do have very strong beaks, but notice that they do not have the curved beak of the raptor. <laughs> they also do not have the talons of a raptor. These are just regular old bird feet. You know, I don't have any problem with perching this bird on my arm, okay? These are not talons. You've seen talons on the raptors that we've had in the, hands up, in, in the hand up here. <laughs> you've seen a lot of crows, but have you really ever looked at a crow? This one, yeah, I know. They do have really strong beaks, but it's like getting it's like getting pinched by forceps, you know? It's not really that big of a deal. Now this bird <laughs> is a hatchier bird. Now it has on its feathers what are called fault bars, and this is something that occurs when you have stress. And maybe it's nutritional stress. Have you ever gotten those little lines on your fingernails? It's kind of like that. Okay, this particular bird has fault lines, has fault bars on its feathers. Can you come out and help me with the wing? Yeah. I can help. Debbie, it's just This bird has fault bars and they go all the way across all of these feathers right here. So that tells us that all of those feathers grew in at the very same time. Now, if it was an adult, it would not grow out, it would not grow in all of its feathers at the same time. <laughs> I don't know if you can see those. Try using your binoculars. You might be able to see them. There's a line right here that goes across. There's another one right here that goes across. Now, this bird has been adopted by somebody. I think it's spoken for. But something interesting is that we're not going to release the bird right here. It was not caught right here, and they're very social. They live in family groups. We're going to bring it back and release it where it was. Now, if this is a territory for another flock of crows, this bird could be in real trouble if we release it right here. So whoever is adopting this bird will get to hold it and get their picture taken, but not to release it. Behind the tree now. Right over here. Behind this tree. Now he's coming out of the tree. There he is. Okay. So we need to get 
just at the top of the tree. There he is. I can stand it. We stayed till they were going to chase us well, out. We saw snow flurries. I know. I know. Well, I will. They're down here. Because you have to have a few times. Oh, look at them. But I don't have a big enough screen to see it. It's not worth it. There's a bunch of them over here. Three of them. And we don't have a package for that, so it would cost us a better And it's on the, the, the west-facing wall, um, there's a box, and they're, I mean, they're all done nothing. This year, yeah, this year the two chicks were named Waters for Debbie Waters and Lourdes. <laughs> um, and people say, just the right length to keep in the bathroom. <laughs> And this is the only bird book in the known that has a clue. So, as raptors are hunting, they need to be able to keep their eyes fixed on their target. And so, as they're chasing something or, or maneuvering after something, something has to move. If their eyes can't, something has to move. It's their neck. Their neck is so flexible that it can move all <laughs> over the place to help them keep their eyes on whatever they are pursuing. Now, it is a, it's an urban myth that owls or other raptors can turn their heads all the way around, but he can turn his head past 180 degrees. And he's doing the 180 degree thing right now. It's just really bizarre. <laughs> all right, so does anyone know what type of bird this is? Cherry. Cherry. Huh? Wow, we have some knowledgeable birders in the audience today. This is indeed a northern harrier. Now, northern harriers are different from other diurnal or daytime birds of prey. If I could get him to turn my face <laughs> Can you, does anyone know what the different, the primary difference between harriers and other diurnal raptors is? Look at the face, what do you see? It looks like an owl. Why? Harriers have facial discs where other diurnal raptors don't. That's because harriers also use their hearing to hunt. Harriers used to be called marsh hawks. They cruise low over the marsh and hunt not just with their vision, but like a hole, they direct sound into their ears. The, the ear... <laughs> I don't know if there's a way I can show it to you, but right behind, right behind this facial disc here is where the Harrier's ears would be. And so those discs funnel the sound into the ears. Those facial discs have nothing to do with vision and everything to do with hearing. Now, Harriers, when they're flying by, I don't know if you've seen Eric doing his Harrier imitation with the flap. They have a deep basketball bouncing type of flap like this. 
I like to say they look like they're kind of trying to flick water off their wrists or their fingertips. Their wings are very long and narrow, almost like a bootios. Maybe not as wide as a bootios, but they're very long and narrow. narrow. Look at that. But they have a very long tail like an exhibitor does. So look at how long that tail is. So if you're looking at a bird and you're thinking, wow, it has really long wings, but the tail doesn't seem right for a bootio, or, you know, it has a really long tail, but the wings seem longer than they should for an exhibitor, consider the harrier. This is a male. It's a first year bird captured at our banding station. Harriers are a little more expensive than sharp shin hawks because we don't catch as many, and this one is already spoken for. If you are interested in adopting a bird, you do have a waiting list going. You need to see someone that's at the um, information table here to get on our adopt a raptor list. We don't like to keep these birds in the hand for too long, so we are going to go ahead with our adoption. And who's adopting our harrier? Where did she go? Okay, come on up. Now, because a harrier is so big, we are going to move our adoption over to the other side of the ridge and release this harrier off that side of the ridge. So I'm going to put this here. I'm going to get the band number first. So, I, do we, where's Eric? We're going to take the pictures on the other side? Okay, if you like. Oh, I'm sorry. I need to Debbie's going to count to three. Well, we're actually all going to count to three. And on three, it's kind of like a granny shot in basketball. So, like you're doing a granny shot in basketball, don't bring her down between your thighs. Okay. But <laughs> throw her up. Like a granny shot in basketball. Three. Oh, beautiful. Oh, see that white front patch that I was talking about? Oh. <laughs> Shelby. All right, ready? One, two, 